Rogers Show. Starring Roy Rogers, King of the Cowboys, Trigger, his golden palomino, and Dale Evans, Queen of the West. With Pat Brady, his comical sidekick, and Roy's wonder dog, Bullet. Hi, Beth. Hi, Pat. Oh, hi. Hey, Paradise Valley's sure getting famous. It's all read up here in the newspaper. What does it say? It says, State University sends expedition to Rocky Point. Professor Roger Petrie, famous archie. Arch, uh, boy, that sure ain't no speaking word there. Archaeologist, Pat. That's someone who's interested in the past. In the past? Well, I thought only snoopers were interested in the past. <laughs> well, an archaeologist is a snooper in a way, but for a real good reason, for education. Not just for the sake of snooping alone. Oh, ho, 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 ho. You understand it now, huh? I'm not sure that I do. <laughs> <laughs> well, while you're thinking about it, hold down the fort, will you? Roy and I are going to ride out to the double R bar. Sure. Archie, arch. Archie. Oh, well, Snooper. <laughs> Why don't they just call them Snoopers in the first place? Yeah. You know who they are, Blake? Day 11's and Roy Rogers. Rogers, eh? We gotta head them off before they get to the height of the Rocky Point. Not much chance of that if Rogers stays with them. We'll stick around till he leaves. Then we'll hit him again. You folks all right? Oh, we're fine, and we're deeply grateful to both of you. We weren't expecting anything like this. My name is Professor Petrie. My daughter, Carla. How do you do? Jim Wilson, my associate. Hello. And Mike, our guide. Howdy. How do you do? This is Dale Evans, and I'm Roy Rogers. How do you do, sir? How do you do? I sure can't understand why those outlaws were trying to run you off. You're not carrying money or anything they might be after, are you? <laughs> well, did you ever hear of a professor that had any money? That's why this expedition's so small. We're doing this on our own. Just what are you looking for, Professor? Well, many years ago, a highly civilized race of Indians lived right here in Paradise Valley. There are traces of that civilization up in the hills. And we're here to find out all we can about those Indians, and then my daughter Carla is going to write a book about them. Well, with Mr. Wilson's help, of course. Where do you intend to camp? Well, Mike knows of an old cabin up at Rocky Point. We thought we'd camp there and start the excavation. Well, if it's the one I'm thinking of, we better ride along with you. Oh, you don't need to bother, Mr. Rogers? That's no bother at all, and we'd like to be of help. A gang of outlaws who have been operating in this vicinity are supposed to be holed up near Rocky Point. I wouldn't be surprised if they were the ones who attacked you. In that event, we'd be deeply grateful if you'd escort us there. Let's go, Mike. Rogers is moving out with them. Let's get to the hideout. If they find that cave, we'll have to do more than scare them away. One bank job left of pulling them jokers had to come along. Come on! Hold it here, Professor. The cabin's right up ahead. I'll ride on and take a look around. You might have gone with him, Jim. This is as much your concern as anyone else's. My dear Carla, 
I believe an expert should stick to his own field of endeavor. I know about archaeology. Mr. Rogers knows about outlaws. spot to pitch a camp. Drive on, Mike. Hey. How do you like that? They're heading for a hideout. We got to get them out of there, Rogers or no Rogers. Take it easy. I got a better plan. Mike knows every inch of this territory. We might be depending too much on his hunches rather than on scientific calculations. I'll take native hunches and know-how any day. I must say, you're not talking like an archaeologist, Professor Petrie. Wilson, I'm speaking from experience. Years ago in Egypt, my scientific calculations proved to be 100% wrong. And who do you suppose set me right? An old Arabian camel herder who couldn't even write his own name. I'd still prefer to work according to our own calculations and maps. All right. Carla. Yes, Dad? Will you get the map and the data I gathered for the excavation, please? Surely. Stay where you are. Get these guys. What was that? That shot came from the cabin. Mike must be in trouble. Carla, keep down. Come on. Wait. We might be rushing into a trap. Besides, we've left our weapons in the cabin. We can't leave Mike alone. Come on, we've got to find out what happened. But this is foolish, Professor. Look, uh, we ought to get our horses and go for help. And leave Mike? What's the matter with you, Wilson? Come on. Come right in, folks. We're expecting. What have you done with Mike? Inside, old-timer. Mike, are you all right? Leave him alone. Get over there. For your information, this cabin belongs to us. The gal's getting away. You want me to go get her? No. No, I got a better idea. Listen, you. I got a little job I want you to do. But I don't want any trouble. Or something might accidentally happen to him. So I want you to get on your horse and start riding to town. Well, now, Cheryl, fixing flapjacks is an art. Not everybody can do it. So you just keep your eye on your old Uncle Pat and learn a little something about the restaurant business. Well, aren't you supposed to greet the girl first, Pat? Well, now, that's a matter of opinion. Well, I never heard of anyone making flapjacks without first greasing the griddle. Me either. Uh, 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 just a minute, folks. When you're out camping, sometimes there's no shortening around. But the way I make them, you don't need any grease. Now watch. <laughs> what we need is a gas mask. <laughs> Scott, the burner's turned up too high. Now I know what happens to all my batter. I'm afraid you better give it up as a bad job. <laughs> I told you you need to grease the grill first, Pat. All right, you win. I'll grease the grill. That's too much. Here, let me show you. Well, I resign. <laughs> I'm afraid if we're ever going to get any flapjacks, you better let Cheryl do them. Mm 
Now, those are what I call fine-looking flapjacks. I bet they're delicious, too. Well, let's stop admiring them and get to eating them. <laughs> Roy! Phil! What's the matter, Carla? The outlaws came back to the cabin. They've got Father and the boys captive. I'll get the sheriff and the posse together and meet you there. Hurry it up, Dale. Right. I'm going with you and Nellie Bell. Cheryl, will you look after things for me until we get back? Okay. Oh, them beautiful flapjacks. I'll make you another batch when you come back, Pat. All right. Oh, them beautiful flapjacks. We drove the bandits off, and we're back working again. Well, I guess there's nothing for us to do. You drove them off kind of easy this time, didn't you? Maybe they decided they didn't want the cabin after all. I just don't understand, Jim. When I left, you were captive. Exactly what happened? I don't know what they're up to, but they're gone. And your father and Mike are perfectly all right. Well, Carter, we might as well go back to town. You can go back to the cabin with Jim. If there's anything we can do, let us know, will you? Thanks so much for all you've done. Bye. 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 Yes, but you better take a look at Mike. Oh, Mike. Is the first aid taking the wagon? Yes, it is. I told Wilson not to go for you. It's all right, Mike. I'd rather be here with Dad than worrying about him. May I get the first aid kit? We'll get it for you, miss. Get the kit. What do you want with us anyway? We don't have any money. Sit down over there and shut up. We'll ask you questions. Don't be rude to the little lady, Hal. If you want to know, we're planning on holding up the bank in Mineral City. Well, what good will we be to you? Maybe the law won't be too anxious to shoot us up with you folks around. Smart, ain't we? Here you are. Well, Sheriff, you go on ahead. We'll see you in town later. Okay, Roy. Come on, boys. The more I think about Wilson's story, the less I like it. It just didn't make sense. I'm beginning to think we shouldn't have let Carla go back up there. Well, Pat... Got a job for you. I want you to go up to the professor's cabin. When you get there, I don't like there's something wrong with Nellie Bell. driving a strange looking vehicle. Get up outside and start working and you keep out of sight. Your contraption. Mighty sweet when she's running good. Mighty sour when she quits on you. Just like a female. What seems to be the trouble? I can't figure it out. I got plenty of gas and oil. The carburetor's working good, too. Hey! 
What's going on here? A gold strike? No, nothing of that sort. We're from the State University, digging up around the Indian ruins. Oh, yeah. I read something about that in the newspaper. Uh, did you dig up anything interesting? No, not yet. Oh, sure wish I could get this thing started. Maybe a little more air in the carburetor. <laughs> ah. Come on now, Nellie Bell. Be good to me. She's kind of funny in front of strangers. But she'll try it this time. Ah, she started. Well, I better get out of here before she decides to quit on me again. I'll see you, fellas. There's a strange one for you. All right, folks, back in the cabin. Boy, I sure did a good job of spying. Well, what'd you find out? Well, them outlaws tried to pull a wool over my eyes. But outlaws? I could... Well, I thought they were driven off. Yeah, that's what that Wilson feller said. But they were there as big as life. What about the professor and the others? They were there, too, digging away. Well, that doesn't sound right to me. Me either. Pat. Ride to town and tell the sheriff we've gone back to the cabin. Nellie Bell, here we go again. Take good care of him. This won't take long. you do a thing like this to me? Where's your sense of responsibility? Roy and Dale are riding into a nest of yellowback rattlers, depending upon us to bring help back. And you have to start crying for new shoes. Oh. Start something. Let's get to the door. Would you mind if I got some water? Top shelf. Oh, uh, would would anyone else like some? Well, I'd like some if you don't mind, Carl. Not at all. Hold it. Thank heaven you've come. Where are the others? They rode to Mineral City to rob the banks here, but they'll be back. Get your guns and we'll be waiting for them. Over here. Might get me a rope.
Get a close to the cave, pick up the rest of the loot and take off. Good scene. You better go outside and take your positions, and when you see them coming, give us a signal. Well, there's nothing to do now, but just wait. showing up yet. Well, I wonder where them varmints could have disappeared to. Goodbye, Ryan. Bye, Dale. Thanks for everything. 
Come on, Roy. Dale 